And let me give you my position on immigration again, in case you missed it. Borders language culture, borders language culture, borders language culture. We need an orderly, legal immigration plan and program. I've said that. I'm not going to beat you up with this all over again. But I want to give you an anecdote about what I actually think of immigration. Last night I went to dinner. I didn't want to drive because I had a drink in my house. And I was warned by my son, who's ten times smarter than me, never drive when you have as much as a drink because the cops are vicious. Instead of going after the crack dealers and the murderers, they'll pull a housewife over who had a beer. We understand how that works. So I don't drive if I had a drink. I usually either have a driver. Last night I used Uber. Woman picked me up, young lady, got me to the restaurant. That's another experience unto itself. Let me tell you all about that one another day. But when I finished the dinner, I hit the Uber app. It didn't work. I had to call my assistant to hit the Uber app on his phone to make it work. Got picked up about eight minutes later. Got in the car with Teddy. Now, every time I call Uber, I'm afraid I'm going to get a fanatical jihadi who says no dogs allowed. In which case, I'm ready to, I'm ready to fight with them. I'm telling you right now, they're not, they're not taking me over nor my country. I'd call the police before I'd give in to one of them. I'd tell them to go back to the hellhole he came from if he doesn't like dogs. Go back where you came from. This is America. But he didn't. Guy picks me up. He's an African. We start to talk. And we start talking about family. I figure that's something that, you know, all races, all countries can relate to. He was a big man, great voice. And I'm talking the ride was 11 minutes. That's all it was. And as it turns out, we talked about children and how he raises his children, how I raise my children. Very similar. Very. He's a father at home with three or four children. He's from Nigeria. And very respectful. You know, everything was yes, sir, and that kind of thing. And, you know, I find that respect generates respect in people. It's an amazing thing. Conversation stayed in a very even keel. And then when he dropped me at my house, I gave him a $20 tip. I didn't know you're not supposed to tip on Uber. I figure if a guy's working cab, he, you know, what do I care? He didn't know who I was. But I know he's a family man. He's struggling. He's raising children. He's trying to do it the right way. So I gave him a $20 tip. I'm telling you exactly the way it is. The next words were very interesting. I said to him after I gave him the tip, not before, I said, do you ever listen to talk radio? He said, yes, I do. And I saw his eyes widen when he looked focused on me. And he said, are you the great Michael Savage? He says, oh, man, I listen to you every day. He said, you are absolutely the greatest. You're like a god to me. Now, ask yourself a question. How is it that a black African male can love this show? Well, the answer is the same way a Haitian cab driver loves this show in New York City. I remember I was in New York a couple a year and a half ago, and a Haitian drove me to WABC. Another big fan of the show. If you listen to what the media tells you, you're going to get a distorted view of reality. The only reality that you should recognize is the reality that you find in the real world. That's the world of the real, the real world, the street world. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you get this or not? So I'm saying that even, well, I guess I'm saying two things. I'm saying I'd like to see a million Africans from Nigeria who are Christians come in. See, he was a Nigerian Christian, which is why he came here to work hard, why he understands America, why he fits in with America, why he loves the savage nation. Do you get what I'm saying to you? And why is Obama bringing in Syrian Muslims instead of Syrian Christians? Why is Obama kicking Syrian Christians out of the country who have been sitting here waiting for months to be accepted. I'll let you figure that one out as well. There's got to be a compatibility with the nation or the nation dies. See, a house divided cannot stand. You can't tell that to Hollywood because they're too drug-addled to understand that. They're brain dead. They're stupid. That's why they're rallying around Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. These people are digging their own graves. How can people who are such high earners want to pay more taxes? They're insane. Liberalism is a mental disorder. Do you understand it? 